In this video, we will discuss how to handle hot glassware safely. Not all reactions proceed quickly enough at room temperature in the lab. Sometimes, we need to heat things up using a hot plate or even an open flame. When doing this, it's crucial to follow proper safety precautions and handling techniques to minimize hazards. You don't want to get burned. Before you start, you must select the appropriate container for the procedure you are performing. Standard glassware such as beakers and test tubes work for heating liquids up through the boiling point of water, but can break at higher temperatures. A ceramic crucible is required for higher temperatures and continuous heating over an open flame or in the oven. Plastic containers are never appropriate for heating. If you want to heat up a reaction in about 200 milliliters of water, what reaction container should you use? The best option is the 400 milliliter beaker. Test tubes and crucibles are too small for heating up the reaction you're working on, and crucibles are typically used for heating solid samples. While a 250 milliliter beaker can technically hold the 200 milliliter reaction, it would be 80% full. This poses a risk of splashing when the water boils. A good rule of thumb is to never fill the container more than two thirds full. Therefore, the 400 milliliter beaker is the safest choice. Now that we know how to choose the correct containers for heating, let's talk about how to handle them when they are hot. The first and most important rule is to never touch hot glassware or equipment with your bare hands. It might sound silly to think that someone would touch hot glassware with their hands, but it happens all too often. For example, in the lab, you might want to check how hot a reaction is, or if a piece of glassware is cool enough to handle. In these situations, you might instinctively do a quick touch test. Please, never touch any glassware or equipment that might be hot. Even a brief contact with very hot glassware can cause burns. Always assume that it is too hot to touch. Instead, check the temperature by hovering the back of your hand about an inch away from the glassware, or use a thermometer. Imagine that you are heating a reaction on a hot plate, but nothing seems to be happening after a while. You are concerned that the hot plate might not be heating properly. What steps can you take to check if the hot plate is working? Select all that apply. Keep in mind that hot glassware looks exactly like cold glassware, so you might not notice any immediate visual changes as it heats up. The only clear sign that a liquid is getting close to its boiling point is the formation of bubbles. Before that, it may seem like nothing is happening, but the glassware could still be getting hotter. Always be patient while heating your reaction, and if you're unsure about the temperature, use a thermometer or another safe method to check instead of touching the glassware with your hands. The second rule in handling hot glassware is to always choose the appropriate tools to handle it. When dealing with lightweight samples like test tubes and crucibles, your lab will have a toolbox of tongs at your disposal. Think of them as the lab's version of barbecue tongs, just without the grill marks or barbecue sauce. These tools let us handle hot equipment with ease, keeping our hands safe and giving us a precise grip. For handling large samples like hefty beakers, insulated gloves are your best bet. They provide the extra protection you need to handle the large hot glassware safely, keeping your hands cool and protected while you work. What is the best tool to use when handling this beaker that contains a hot reaction? As the speaker is large and heavy, the safest option is to use a pair of insulated heat-resistant gloves to handle the beaker. After picking up the right tool, practice with it before handling hot glassware. It's like rehearsing for a show, preventing mishaps and keeping things safe. Here, we'll go over using the crucible tongs, which can be a bit tricky to first-time users. There are two ways to use the crucible tongs. The first method involves placing the crucible in the diamond-shaped middle section of the tongs. Hold the tongs with the tips pointed upwards, open them, position them around the crucible, and then close them. 
This creates a cradle around the crucible, allowing you to move it, but does not always provide a tight grip, which can lead to slips and breakages. Therefore, the second and recommended method to use the crucible tongs is to pinch the crucible with the tip of the tongs. To do this, grab the side of the crucible using the tongs tip. This method provides a stronger grip and better control over the crucible. Which of the following is the recommended way to use the crucible tong? As we discussed earlier, the recommended way to handle a hot crucible is to grab it on the side using the tip of the crucible tongs. This method can be a bit tricky, so make sure to practice before your actual experiment to avoid accidentally breaking the crucible and spilling a reaction. Once you've moved the hot glassware away from the heat source, it's time to cool things down. Remember to always turn off the hot plate and put out the Bunsen burner. Also, keep in mind that the glassware, hot plate, and the burner will still be hot for some time, so please work with care. To cool the hot glassware quickly, you may be tempted to run it under cold water. Unfortunately, that is a very bad idea. The thermal shock from the rapid temperature change can cause the glass to shatter, which is very dangerous. Always allow the glassware to slowly come to room temperature. What is the correct procedure for allowing hot glassware to cool? In order to be as safe as possible, we must wait for the glassware to come to room temperature gradually, on its own. And remember, you should not touch the glassware to check how the cooling is going. After all, it is very likely that the glassware is still very hot. Handling hot glassware safely is one of the key aspects of a safe lab experience. And don't worry if you accidentally break a piece. Things happen. Just be sure to review how to handle and dispose of glass waste properly. Lastly, if you accidentally burn yourself during the experiment, stay calm. Quickly cool the burned area with running water for at least 15 minutes. Your lab instructor will then help you get in touch with professional medical services. That said, by following the best practices when working in the lab, we hope that this will never happen and everyone can enjoy a safe and fun time in the lab.